in this video I'm going to tie the one of these flies and why I'm tying this is because of the loop that they have on the end of the abdomen and it's uh, made to catch fish obviously because it has a hook but it's also made to have a dropper tag that's easy to mount without dropper knots which I don't very I'm, I'm not very fond of those I don't think they are reliable completely uh, obviously it's not competition legal because for competitions you need to have those dropper knots but for free fishing is perfectly good and it's much easier to, to fix everything together than uh, dropper knots and things in regards to materials I'm going to use this hook and this hook is Chinese hook it's pretty more or less it's some kind of terrestrial nymph hook it's very big long for the size 10 for the tag well not tag but loop I'm going to use this Trilan in 30 little LBs uh, just like it's almost impossible to to break I mean, definitely for this this fly, the, the tippet I'm going to use is not going to be nearly as strong to be able to, to go through this line. Then I'm using foam, and this is closed cell foam. Uh, Evazote or something like that is the name, it's very rare. Uh, those foams that are readily available on the market are not nearly as good as this one. This one is softer. It has those nice bubbles inside. It's more buoyant and it's much easier to work with. Downside is that it's less durable. For the dubbing, I'm going to use this one and it's UV black. Um, I just like the color. Uh, dubs nicely, not super thick, uh, not super coarse. That's why I like it. Uh, for the legs, I will use hairline, flex olive brown, uh, primarily because I don't have black, otherwise I would be using black, but I can color it obviously, but I'm not, not going to do that. Thread is Semperfly, it's wax thread 6 through 0. It can be flattened, very important for the foam here, and because it doesn't cut through it if it's flattened. And again, it's strong enough to go and secure the hair that I need to be secured. For the hair, I'm using Elk Cow by Wapsi. And let me just show you the package. So this would be the, the, the elk that, I be, that I'm using. So it's Cow Elk, a little bit softer than Elk and very nice to work with. And as you can see, uh, there is a curve here it's curved here so it's when you just stack it it's going to go everywhere but you, as you will see in this situation it, it was a little bit more obedient and uh, it was easy to stack it uh, so that would be it now let's go into tying so I will start with this hook in the vise and it's size 10 as I was mentioning in the beginning part the thread is 6 through 0 by Semperfly uh, it's white because cover doesn't matter so much uh, for the most of the fly. I will start fly uh, somewhere at one third mark, somewhere. So then I will take the tippet material or whatever you want to call it. Well, in this case, it's more loop material. And look what I'm doing. I'm pulling towards me to prevent exactly what happened. Uh, so one, two, three, I'm pulling for me, towards me. I want to prevent rotating the material around the hook that's caused by pushing of the thread, thread torque. But you can also manipulate it with your uh, left or whatever non-dominant hand you're using. Uh, for me, I'm right hand tire, so everything is uh, in left hand that's not dominant. So I'll go a little bit into the bend and here I'll go just a little bit behind to secure everything, kind of lock. I like to use hook on the on my uh, whip finisher just to position everything here and to see uh, when I narrow down the loop how it looks like. So I'll just make one two wraps to hold everything in position 
you can remove the wood finisher or dubbing needle or whatever you want and now instead of pushing towards myself I'll push towards the camera in order not to rotate the thread it's a little bit tricky because the nylon is too long so I'll just cut it and now you will see the benefits of thread torque so up 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 as opposed to push push and going around so no pressure up no pressure away from me no pressure away no pressure away and so on and so on as I'm reaching the end of this I can actually release the pressure and just kind of do this now benefits of this is the because I'm getting the flat body I'm not pushing everything on the top I'm getting wider body here so the foam that I'm going to mount is going to be less likely to rotate around the hook obviously I'm going to use some super glue to secure everything but uh, additional secure security in this case flat body won't, won't hurt so I'll just use my old dubbing needle to spread this Okay, it's always smart to have a piece of paper to clean the dubbing needle or to soak the excess, the excess uh, glue. Now, here, I like what I like to do is I like to go with the thread under and then just two wraps and kind of putting it together so just make this loop more narrow as you can see just my preference nothing else now this uh, glue is still fresh so I'll start so. cutting foam uh, that's more or less maybe seven or eight millimeters wide and I'm just sometimes eyeballing but because I have this mat I'll just go and go with my knife through it and just do it as accurately as precisely as you can because it will later save you from from uh, cutting additionally so just go with a nice steady cut and when you have some stripes then you can proceed and cut uh, the the green one that I will use for the uh, body abdomen actually so for this one I'll just go like maybe three millimeters or so I'm not sure more or less square shape when looked as a cross section just go more or less three millimeters but it's not so important this time so when you do that you're ready to go so I'm going to take one of those straps that I prepared and they're kind of hook gap width so I'm going to fold it in double and this is more or less how much I need I fold over and that's how I need I'll just take a little bit more so I need double layer of, of this I also cut corners like so so it's going to be easier to catch everything counter spin the bobbin holder in in uh, in here so it, the thread jumps into your hand and I want to go all the way to the place where I secured the loop and then it's very useful if you do this with flat thread because you will need less wraps I'm going to cut into the foam to compress it as much as I can and because I don't want too bulky body over here so I'm just compressing those air bubbles that are left and I mean my mic is not good obviously but uh, I can hear bubbles bubbles popping so 
at this point I will add the thin stripe that I, that I made and I said it's more or less square cross section so I'll just go towards the rear counter spin the bobbin again bobbin holder catch it okay now I'm going to compress it as well and time to add some more super glue foam flies they require super glue because it makes them a little bit more durable you don't need to do it but yeah it can be beneficial I like to do it because durable flies fly the, that's gonna make you less headaches so at this for this one you just wrap it around you stretch it a little bit to get a little bit thinner you can see uh, the, the glue reacting over here bubbling but it's not going to ruin your fly don't worry but test the glue on the foam before you start using the glue because sometimes maybe it can burn through it okay just make this transition here nicer okay now this is I think the last time I'm going to use the glue over here just a small drop on the top that's it no need for more clean the needle Oops. and now what I'm going to do is pull upwards and stretch a little bit then go one two reps pull up like you would do all the materials that you don't want to rotate check if everything sits well if it does then perfect now you can do, do this very simply I'll just stretch a little bit and stretch and good I can cut corners here because I don't need it but this is what I need now I'm stretching the foam again just to make it let's say less bulky and I'm going towards the eye when I reach the eye okay, I go back trying to compress the whole the, the foam that I had here and catching okay the, the thread slipped here because it wasn't compressed enough so I'll have to compensate at the moment right now because I don't want foam to fall out this is my mistake fully my mistake now luckily I didn't cut the foam too close to the thread otherwise it may slip out now this time I will add some glue which I usually don't add at this moment just let it soak in the thread over here and secure everything a little bit better well everyone can make a mistake I guess now here I want it a little bit thicker to mount the legs and to mount the wing and finish off the fly so I'll use the dubbing that I showed you I saw this thing from Khalid Gallup. He cuts the corner of the bag and then it's easier to, to reach into it and just use the dubbing. So just take a little clump, but I will not use it as this. I will take smaller and smaller bits so I can control it more easily. Okay, I'm just using relatively small bits. I want to build up some taper over here and I will explain you very soon why okay I'll leave this spot open now here I will add legs and before that I will just add some dubbing dubbing needle that's relatively thin as thin as possible just to cover up the thread and thin noodle will actually 
still have power to hold legs into position whereas if you if i adopt very thick dubbing noodle the the power will a little bit be cushioned by the dubbing now similar thing as with dubbing i just grab and cut the whole length of this dub material now to be consistent in uh, in legs I do this, I line those tips here and I just cut in half and for two legs I'm using one half so this half I need to cut again in half meaning that I am using quarters so I'll mount it one by one although you can just slide it under if you're using bare thread and spin the thread again for the same reason as before one, two. Ah, you can ma manipulate it a little bit. Now I like rear legs to be slightly longer than the front ones. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same with another pair set of legs. Counter spin the bobbin holder. Make it jump set those legs to length now obviously I don't need to cut anything here because they're already perfect so by knowing the length of your legs here for the fly you're actually uh, getting one less step in the production of your fly okay I just need a little bit more dubbing because it shows here of the over the dubbing so I'll just add a little bit more. I don't want thread to show through the dubbing anywhere. And here is where the black thread would be a little bit better. Okay, let me see, a little bit better. Good. Now it's time to cut the cut the hair and mount the wings. I just push the scissors inside the hair and divide as much as I want and I sort of feel the clump between my fingers and I know if I, if I need more or not it's just a matter of feeling that you get after some time uh, nothing else very important thing to do is to clean the hair from under fur and those short hairs that are left uh, on the velcro here uh, by doing so I'm actually helping uh, myself uh, in, um, to stack this hair it's much easier to stack hair if you remove all of this under fur uh, and uh, short hairs under fur actually interlocks with hair and it sort of uh, bonds those hairs together and it's very difficult to stack it properly it's very difficult to st stack it properly if it's not removed completely now put the hair in the put the hair in the stacker just push them inside and then give it vertical and then give it a little bit to the side hit so the hair gets aligned on the bottom this one is already pretty much aligned well but there are a couple of hairs sticking where I don't want it to go so just by manipulating a little bit it's well done this this is very rare to happen to get hair stacked as this because it's curved it's usually uh, unstacked I'll go with my finger under pinch together and now I'll show you the result as you can see uh, okay the curved hair goes all in one direction they're all together and that's a very nice thing to have uh, swept hairs in one direction it means that you're controlling your material now by sweeping the hair in one direction 
you're con showing that you're controlling it and it looks just nicer and this is a little bit cumbersome here it's a little bit tricky to mount but it's okay okay counter spin the bobbin holder again one wrap and then I'm avoiding those legs two wraps and up up and up and up and this is it let's see the result result is good I'll move all the hair so I'll make locking wraps so it doesn't run away or unravels or whatever and I'll just cut the excess hair I'll just manipulate a little bit here I'm trying to cut it as close to the foam as possible sometimes legs are in the way but it's fine not so difficult to avoid them but it's very useful if you have uh, scissors that are with fine tips so you can reach and cut all the stray uh, hairs that you don't want and cut those butt ends as near as possible now when I'm satisfied I'll just sweep everything with flat thread I'll just compress this here a little bit more but the dubbing will do it its best here so don't worry about it so I'll just compress a little bit now what you want to do is to cover it with dubbing now so I'm just using a little bit more dubbing again use thin noodle because you have more control over the thin noodle as opposed to thick noodle it's more wraps for sure but that everything is much better as a final result and the co co control will having control will actually uh, prevent you from having having any headaches while mounting the fly now one tip here as you can see the wing is quite wide so you can collect all those hairs I'll just collect them and you can just catch them with dubbing okay that's it they're a little bit more gathered sort of sort of saying like that now I'll add a little bit more dubbing again thin noodle I just want to hide the thread but this time I'm going to actually color the thread because I'm reaching the end phase of the fly so the whip finish and everything uh, for that I want to have to cover the thread now the first wrap is going to be to form sort of a head over here so same as for the hair counter spin the bobbin holder make one loose wrap two wraps I'll do it again I need more thread so one relatively loose wrap two wraps and then hold everything in position pull upwards and you got a nice little head there now black dubbing black thread doesn't show but OCD is working hard and sometimes giving me trouble so just just in case cover the thread and cover the the thread here I mean it can be seen in macro photos and stuff so that's why I'm saying I'm having go CD not really so one two and then I'll just make an angle over here and pass through the legs where I had legs whoop let me see I need to check the wings and everything pull upwards looking good pull upwards okay web finish with flat thread that's the first whip finish
with bare thread and then I'll make one to hide the thread and that's all for this fly I mean it's definitely a complicated one compared to what I usually tie I need th thinner than this um, but I think it's worth it because uh, sometimes I just enjoy tying flies they're pretty to me it, it won't hurt that it's a little bit complicated uh, I just may like them sometimes to be more complicated more sort of realistic even though this is not realism it just make me feel better like giving the, the fish the best I can do so I'm just gonna whip finish with my hand one two and three here Oop. cut everything and final touch I'll just add a tiny little drop of super glue over here let it soak and make sure that everything stays together that's it that's final touch okay clean the needle now oops now let's pull this up stretch it cut it that's all all we gotta do now I'll just push those wings a little bit back because they were working a little bit you may add some head cement here to set the wings but I don't think it's necessary even with fan wings uh, the, the fly will be excellent because I mean all those critters they have those wings when they're struggling on the on the surface they have it all over so I don't think it, it's gonna matter but I like those legs to be a little bit longer so they can provide some more movement as you can see here as opposed to short legs that are like less likely to move uh, so guys please tell me what you think about this fly uh, and hope to see you next time when I'm gonna tie some other fly uh, until then have a great time, tight lines and keep safe.